If you're like me, you're a pretty big fan of using partials in Rails. And until you cover uh, more than just the basics, do you realize the power that they uh, hold? With partials, you can do stuff like slots, uh, passing locals through, rendering co collections a certain way. And with Rails, there's all these common conventions where you can almost get away with typing almost zero code to do quite a big lift. So th this guide's essentially just showing you, like a show and tell mostly, just to show you a little bit more about partial rendering and how you might go a little bit deeper than maybe you're aware of, of what you can do with partials. Newer features like strict locals and whatnot, all the other ways and conventions of rendering things uh, gets pretty fancy and I really love it. Some people in the, in the space lately have kind of poo-pooed the partial construct itself and reached for something like view component, which is, has its place. Um, and I think it just mostly comes down to preference, in my opinion. There is a performance hit, I think, with traditional partial rendering, but I think it's ne negligible if you can get away with doing it the proper way or doing it with a way that isn't creating uh, massive amounts of queries or something on the fly where you're doing something like an N plus one query or some sort of um, issue there. But there are several way ways in the app, in a Rails app. If you look at the docs I have open here, it's called the renderer class. It's part of the module, action view module. And I find if I look at the Rails docs more commonly, you kind of get an inside perspective of what's actually happening under the hood because there's a little magic going on most of the time. And I think that's a little bit of a, I guess, downside of Rails as far as extracting away so, so much. Sometimes it feels like magic. So the render method is responsible for obviously rendering content in the action view layer. And it can be also applied in the controller layer. So if you look and say, our projects controller here, you could see it being applied on the response type when the response updates. In our case, I have a project class here, projects controller. Um, it's redirecting back to the project URL, uh, but we can also, if there's an error, render the edit template, and it's going to go ahead and fetch that from the views based on the naming conventions Rails kind of upholds to. So that convention over configuration is really important in this context. And that's all happening in this API version. If you look in the class, it can kind of just check if there's a collection happening, if there's like object being passed, if there's a block being passed, all those things kind of come into play based on what kind of partial rendering you declare. And it's all based on um, just the context of where you're rendering it too. So it's pretty dynamic and that's what I like about it. So you can use it in multiple places. It can be applied in a helper module. It can be in a new partial itself, you can render it as a collection. So basically on your index, I'll go back to my view here and try to give you, this is the, the bare bones approach that's very convention driven. So this assumes there's going to be a projects collection coming from the controller on our index action here. And from that, it's going to assume there's also a product, a project partial in this folder, and it will go ahead and render that out. If you look at our UI, here's a, an app I scaffold real quick. Uh, it is re using Rails UI and what's called the Shepherd theme at this point, just to get some UI from it. I didn't, I didn't want it to look crappy. So that's what's happening here. If you go check the written guide for this, you'll see a prerequisite section of if you, if you want to follow along and have this UI, um, you can do that for free. It's just a couple steps. Then you create some project objects. So we have something to go with and demo. Get a little bit deeper in the weeds here. So just to show you some different ways of rendering a collection. I'm calling this a smart collection. I think it's just called a collection. Um, but I just described what it does. You can also render it this way. And this is the more verbose way to do it. I would reach for something like this in the case of if I'm not necessarily in the project's namespace. So maybe you're over on a profile setting or something. Maybe it's a profile page, but you need the access to the projects of that user. You can go ahead and reach for it this way. You need to pass a collection object. And then also you can't just pass the collection itself without passing a partial. So if I comment this out, you're going to get a bug. It's going to have raised an argument in that class. Uh, it just needs to invoke, did not give it a body file in HTML inline partial plain renderable or template option, which as you can see, this is how um, pretty vast that the render function is for partials. So you can do quite a lot with it. We'll go into that in a second, but if you pass the partial through, you should be able to, to go ahead and do that and be pretty peachy keen. So that's one approach to doing that. I'm going to, remove that for now. Uh, another one is the common each block. So instead of just what we did, that collection is kind of taking care of that. So this this is kind of 
doing that looping function you're commonly used to maybe. So something like this is more granular. So maybe I'll uncomment it here. Sorry, there's so many comments. I know it might be a little fuzzy to see or understand. But if we do this, this is the same thing. It's just applied a different way. It looks like I have an issue here. All right, so if you remove that project names declaration for some reason, we need to do that. And you can pass the partial through and then the project instance. So if we don't have this, it will actually bug out because that partial expects that local variable to be passed. So that's one thing to take into account. So this works just fine. But if you happen to do this, it's going to bug out because it is more of thinking this of a collection. And in this case, you're already looping through that collection. This is more of an individual, individual instance of that project class or object. So we need to get away with it this way. Personally, I'm going to go, you know, this approach if I can and get away with it at all times, but sometimes it's just not so easy and you need to be a little bit more explicit. So you can declare what partial, what collection, all those things based on where you're at in the app. So it gets a little confusing, but I think the more you work with it, the more you start to understand it. Now, a nice little addition to the rendering of a collection is adding a spacer partial. So if you wanted to, you could add another partial that gets rendered every other one. So in this case, we're going to render a collection that's an object of the projects and we'll get this spacer. I added just a simple spacer partial in our shared folder here. And it's just a, you know, like a div with some Tailwind CSS applied just to show you the context here. So you could do something like that. This would be to me kind of cool if you need to dynamically insert ads or something like that. Not that that's a great practice or anyone loves that, but it is a way to get away with it. But commonly, I think you would just put some sort of spacing in between, hence the name. So that's a, another approach. Um, it, it could be as simple as this too, just a rendering of render projects project. And you're going to get essentially a bug because we don't have a project. But if we could just say project projects, the first one in that or, uh, collection, we get the first one. So something like that. If you really were going to get fancy, you could go as far as um, just doing a simple partial too, where it's like not even in this iterative state. So we could say uh, shared. I made a little partial of my name. Just like that, it could get real simple. So there's the avatar of me and then the creator of, you know, web crunch. Notice the web crunch here. I want to talk about strict locals for a second. So a newer feature, I, think, I mean, it came out a few years back, but it's called strict locals and you can kind of get away with it in this fashion. So if you notice when I rendered that basic shared parcel, um, I can actually declare something called business because I, I named this local within that partial. I want to show you what it really does. And I could change this to um, creator of Rails UI. And that'll change the partial. Uh, but there is a default. And you'll wonder, where the where's the default set? And it's actually in that partial. So if you look up here, this commented out ERB tag, you're going to have to follow the syntax here. You have a locals um, setting. And then you can pass um, either a default. In this case, you can pass a default, or you can make it just an empty setting where it's a, a requirement to pass business through. If you don't do that, it'll actually bug out, I believe. Yeah. And then we'll say missing local business. So that's kind of the strict local thing being applied. I find that pretty handy because you commonly will need to do that. And then I like to be able to set defaults. Now, if you weren't using strict locals, the old, old way of doing this was pretty gross, um, but it did work. Business, you need to do some inline ERB essentially, and you'd set that equal to local assigns. That's a, essentially in a way to, to, to grab a local, you can declare it like that and then get business or web crunch. So that's one way to do it. That was the old way. So this this kind of works. Um, it's in this case, it's not working, but we could say business. You got to set this variable to something else. That's the problem. So it just gets kind of crazy. So that works if you want it to be that way. Uh, if you don't set it, it will go fall back to that web crunch or not. Oh, I still have the comment. 
I need to remove that. And I think I still need local assigns. See how it gets kind of all these little things to remember? This is where it gets kind of crazy. But there you go. That way works. But look, that's kind of gnarly in my opinion. So this new locals approach is a little more cleaner, um, more predictable too. So I'm going to undo that, undo this. We can change it back to Rails UI. Works just fine. So that's a new, newer but neat way to kind of get away with partial rendering. Also inside, I want to talk about rendering a file. You can actually render a direct file inline if you wanted to. Um, this might be useful for maybe like an email or some sort of attachment. I don't know. Uh, I made a resources, lib resources resume. It's commonly where you'd put extra stuff in your app. Um, so in this lib directory in the root folder, I added a um, resources path, just this resume of HTML. Now it's going to print this out as plain text. So it's going to essentially strip the HTML or not render the HTML. You could probably call render. I want to, I'm curious if it'll do HTML safe on it. No, that doesn't work. So that's essentially just rendering contents of a file. So that's one way to approach it. You could also render um, additional like formats if you want to get into the weeds of all the things you could render. Um, there's the docs here kind of show everything. You can render stuff inline. You can render a body. Uh, plain text, HTML, of course. Yeah, let's convert that to HTML. Maybe it'll work. wonder if you could do the file from the HTML. No, just the file. So that's, I mean, that's one thing to do. But you could just go, hello world. Render, oh, you got to call HTML safe on it. Like I thought. That should go ahead and render it then. There we go. Uh, one little cool thing in addition to our collections that I forgot about is a passing an as property back through to it. So I don't know if I have it as an example here. Yeah, let's go back to this kind of example. So you can render just what we have before. This should work fine. But you could also pass an as object through to it if you want to name it something else. In this case, we just probably just keep it as project. So. This isn't assuming you need this, but it would still work just how you would have it. Uh, but that allows you essentially to go through to this partial, change the, the local variable that you want to be passed through to it and modify it in line. Doubt you'll use that much, but it is something you could use. Maybe if you're passing a collection of something else through to, so say you have like projects, but you're going to pass it through as user project or something like that. If you want it to be scoped to a specific user, I don't know. I think it's just more of a preference kind of thing. Finally, I, I do have this cool little partial uh, thing I want to talk about that is built into Rails UI. And I'm going to go to, to the configuration, the design system, and back down to Rails UI uses Devise as the built-in authentication solution for now. We'll maybe have more later at, at some point, but that's just kind of where I started with it. And the scope of it is rendering a actual layout as a partial layout uh, within the scope of passing content through to it. So if you look into this, you can see how I'm using a partial to render, and you can pass a block to it, essentially, and pass in contents of, say, for, for instance, customized device views. So when you go and install a device, you get these, these bare bones views if you want to you know, generate those. And part of Rails UI is customizes those so you don't have to. Uh, it gives you at least a starting point. And the way it works is the auth layout, in this case, is a wrapper around this kind of markup here. So this is the contents of that. That allows you to yield inside of it. So you're using both partials, rendering, and uh, content for and yield statements. So it's kind of like slots if you've used that in other frameworks like view or uh, view component, something like that. I found it pretty useful in this context. So you're able to just pass that stuff through as you need. And this, this omits me from having to write all this code in each view. That way I can just render it all within this. So I have this shared partial. When you download and install this theme, or template I'm calling them, um, you're, you're just basically having to deal with quite a bit less code in this context. And um, it's just kind of set it and forget it in that context. So it's pretty, pretty sweet. I think it's pretty useful in the context of that yielding content for uh, 
uh, statements in your app. Kind of complex, but I, I basically explained it a bit here too. If you want to check out the source code, which I'll share in the end of this video uh, in the description or the blog post, if you want to check that out. Uh, finally, in the controller, we're also rendering, I mentioned this early, but you can render the same thing based on the, the symbol passed here. So relative to what's happening in the context of um, the request cycle, so say you're creating a post after that's created, you might redirect back to the page, that's fine. But in the JSON response, you might render the show page, which gives you the data back from the show uh, view, which is right here. And then that JSON gets piped through, so it's all grade to go. So this is kind of the JSON JBuilder. I'll have to talk about JBuilder at some point. I haven't talked about it at all, I don't think. Uh, pretty neat little solution for the Rails app if you need to respond as JSON. It all correlates to the action. So this is just saying, I want to render this action if this happens. So in our case, if create didn't work, project didn't save, we'd go back to the new form page. So essentially back to this template. And that's just all taken care of. So the render statement's super powerful. I think all the ways to render these partials, I didn't even cover all of them, but there's so many. Um, and I think it's pretty neat how little you can end up typing uh, to achieve the effect you're after. So just something as simple as this in the end right here always wowed me. Uh, I thought when I first learned Rails, I had no idea what was happening with this. And that's the magic that's kind of like fuzzy. But as you start to understand, di dissect a little bit of this, you start to see, oh, that's all that's happening. It's just, you know, being extracted and taken care of for you. So pretty cool. Hope this was useful. It took me a while to understand this all. So hopefully you understand it a little bit better than before. All right. I'll see you in the next video.